Top 10 Awesome Things You Didn't Know About Ants Number 10. They Can Stitch Up Wounds Minor wounds are considered just an annoyance, with advanced medicine just to call away. However, if we were in the middle of the African savanna with no first aid kit, and the nearest help we can get is still days away, fixing that little wound can mean life or death. Apparently, some tribes like the Maasai tribe in East Africa faced the same problem and found an easy first aid trick on the go, the army ants' strong pincers. If a Maasai warrior is out in the African bush and suffers a wound that needs stitching, all he needs to do is look for an army ant's nest and then pick out a few of the biggest ants he could find and have them bite both sides of the wounds, then break off the body, leaving just the head. The seal created by the makeshift surgical staples can last for days and can be easily replaced if needed. Number 9. Before God created man, he created ants first. We all know that we, as a species, are relative newbies in the world of creation, evolving a mere five million years ago. Now compare that to a living fossil like the ant, who has been around since the Cretaceous period, about 110 to 130 million years ago. The age gap and the relative high social evolution of the ants may mean that only a fluke roll of the celestial dice made the difference in regards to what species came first. Number 8. They dispose of their dead. Only a few creatures on Earth treat their dead with some relative deference – humans, elephants, and, shockingly, ants. They even have undertakers to do it. When an ant dies inside the nest, they will carry the dead body outside for sanitation's sake, so that infection or disease cannot spread to the entire colony. Though any worker ants may carry the body outside, it seems there is a special ant undertaker that will usually do the cleaning up. Number 7. They can clone themselves. Parthenogenesis is a form of reproduction where there is no need for fertilization, making the resulting offspring a clone of the mother. A group of Amazonian ants was found to give birth to clones of themselves, creating a colony with no males around and somewhat echoing the legend of the fierce Amazons who do not tolerate male company. Not to be outdone, the males of the small fire ant, whose queens also practice parthenogenesis in giving birth to new queens, makes sure that their genetic legacy spreads on by cloning themselves. This special trick of the male small fire ant involves eliminating the female genome in some of the fertilized eggs, making the ant a perfect clone of the father. This unique reproductive maneuverings of both female and male small fire ant results in a nest composing of ants of the same species that has the genetic makeup of three complete completely different species, the queen clones, the male clones, and the sterile female workers with mixed genes. Number 6. They teach their young. As social insects, ants have a very advanced system going on in their colonies in order to ensure their survival worker ants are put into groups that does various specialized jobs like foraging, janitorial services, or caretaker of eggs and baby ants. What is surprising is that these worker ants are not born with the necessary skills already pre-programmed in their DNA to do some of these specialized works. For them to have these skills, they do what we humans do, learn it from someone who knows how things are done. The teacher ant's teaching style is called tandem running, where the teacher ant will teach a younger ant the ropes by running with it. This kind of teaching, even more surprisingly, involves a two-way interaction between teacher and student, the first in a non-human animal. If a student is a slow learner and fails in its exams, it will be relegated to some other job that does not require specialized skills. Number 5. They know how agriculture works. Among all creatures, we know of only four that are evolved enough to use agriculture as a means of survival – bark beetles, termites, humans, and ants. However, between ants and us, it seems they started farming first, having been at it since 50 million years ago. Before moving out of her birth nest, a young queen must first sneak inside the garden and take away some fungal pellets. These pellets will be the seedlings that she needs to start her own garden and feed her brood. Atene ants do their farming by cultivating fungi, just like humans do in farming crops. They even use pesticides to combat parasites that affect their crops. There are five known systems of agriculture that ants practice, but all ants that practice agriculture are shown to share some general habits in fungal gardening. Number 4. They use herbicides and disinfectant. Speaking of pesticides, ants use them, as well as herbicides, in their fungal gardens. Theirs is far more eco-friendly than ours, however. 
The fungal gardens that the ants grow are also home to a virulent kind of fungus that kills the fungal crops. To prevent this fungal weed from spreading, the ants have a bacteria at their disposal that they carry around on their cuticles. The bacteria produces an antibiotic that specifically suppresses the growth of the fungal weed. In their nests, they use several substances that inhibit the spread of parasites or weeds. The wood ants, for example, add solidified conifer resins to their nests while building them, which hinders the growth of bacteria and fungi. The lemon ant, which prefers to nest in trees, produces a natural herbicide that kills all other plant life surrounding their nesting tree, including grown trees. They do this by injecting leaves with herbicides, and the plants will start to die within hours. Number 3. They raise livestock. Ants do not only raise crops, but also livestock, which they use for milking. The livestock consists of insects, like aphids, mealybugs, and myrmelocophus caterpillars, that secrete a sweet liquid called honeydew. The ants keep the predators away from their livestock and even herd them from one feeding location to another, just like what we do with cows. When it is time to collect some honeydew from the livestock, the ants milk them by tapping them with their antenna. The ants even bring their precious livestock with them when they migrate to a new area. Kind of reminds us of frontiermen bringing their cattle along while in search of greener pastures. Number 2. They Wage Wars Imagine the scene in the final battle of Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. Total carnage wherever you look, with the battle lines blurred out as the warring parties are jumbled up in the heat of battle, with groups of soldiers clustering together to form a cohesive front and take out an enemy at a time. Now imagine, instead of the handsome, unsullied face of Legolas and his crew, you get ants with menacing mandibles and scary big eyes of doom. The tactics ants use in warfare are eerily similar to human war strategies, and they even vary their tactics depending on what is at stake. They can even use propaganda pheromones to confuse enemy ants and make them fight among themselves. There are even species of ants like the Amazon ants that oddly resembled the fabled Spartans in their way of life. Namely, they only survive through waging wars to replenish their slaves and to get more resources from other colonies. They even act like medieval knights when in their nests, doing nothing more than demanding food from their slaves and burnishing their chitinous armor. Number 1. They practice slavery. As a whole, ants are known for being hard workers, but, just like humans, there are some rotten apples in their baskets. There are several species of ants that are dependent on slave labor for survival, and who will actively wage war against other colonies to steal the pupae and enslave them upon hatching. The most rotten apple in the bunch is a species of ants called Polyergus breviceps, which, interestingly, is endemic in the United States. This species of ants have lost their ability to take care of their young and even themselves. They do not forage for food, feed the young or the queen, or even clean up their own nest. This kind of behavior would mean certain extinction for most species, but these ants have a superior weapon up their sleeve, weapons of mass subjugation. The warrior ants will attack a nest and release a formic acid against the defenders. This will trigger panic among the ranks and crumble their defenses, making it a breeze to steal the pupae. If that is not enough, they have a more formidable weapon, their queen. The queen of Polyergus breviceps is capable of releasing pheromones that will reduce the aggression of the defending ants, making them easy for conquest. In some instances, when the ants badly need more slaves, the queen will go out with the warriors to war. After releasing her pheromones to crush the aggression of the defenders, she will immediately look for the queen of the overtaken nest and kill her. Everything is not lost for the slaves, though. Every so often they stage rebellions against their masters by ripping apart the larvae of those that enslaved them. This means the slaver ants have less chance of going out and conquering more as their numbers are quickly dwindling, thus saving other ants from slavery, one baby ant at a time. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button in the top right. Our channel has loads of other awesome videos just like this.